Welcome to the Red Hood and the Outlaws right here at Comic Storian, where we give you audio dramas and narrations of your favorite comic book storylines. So recently here in the Comic Storian office, we realized that we've covered a good chunk of the entirety of Red Hood's history. We've done Under the Red Hood, we've done his origin, we did Lost Days, we did Red Hood and Arsenal, and we did Red Hood and the Outlaws, the Dark Trinity, and then we did his new Evil Teen Titans, but we realized there's one story that we've been skipping over since the beginning, and that is the Red Hood and the Outlaws New 52 run in which Red Hood, Arsenal, and Starfire eventually go into space. It's probably the longest running storyline that he's had other than his Red Hood Rebirth storyline. So we're going to start that today. This takes place before the Dark Trinity, but after he has pretty much become an anti-hero. There are many things that have been hard to do in Jason Todd's life. Saying goodbye is one of them he decided that it would be best for him to never say it. As he attempts to climb out of a sinking submarine, a criminal grabs a hold of him, telling him, Give it up! Escape is impossible! We will die here together like men. Jason sighs as he points his gun at the man's face, telling him, You did it again! You underestimated me. He pulls the trigger, pulling himself up, stating that people like him should have thought twice before smuggling nuclear weapons into Miami. Why couldn't they just have brought drugs in like everyone else? That way they wouldn't have to worry about people like him. He breaks through the inner wall to crawl out of the submarine and a second later, it explodes. A few days later, on a small island, Jason rests hooked up to an alien machine. He slowly opens up his eyes as someone tends to the machines asking where is he? As the medicine flows into him though, he falls back asleep. A few more days later, a beautiful woman with a slightly orange tint to her skin and fiery red hair stands beside Jason asking if he's still not awake. Jason mumbles some stuff and as the woman touches his forehead he jolts up with his gun at the woman's neck telling her that he knew that if he played dead long enough she would but his grip loosens on the gun as the medicines take over and he asks how did I get here and where are my pants? The woman tells him to hush and rest and that's when Jason's gun begins to melt from her skin. Several more days pass before Jason has the strength to get up on his own, and when he does, he explores more of the island. After a bit of wandering, he stumbles upon a giant, wrecked alien spacecraft, and the woman from before tells him that it's good to see him up. Now please come in. Before Jason has the chance to say anything, the woman explains that her name is Princess Cory. From the planet of Tamarin, some have also known her as Starfire, and welcome to her home. Jason stands there trying to cover himself up, telling her, uh, Todd, Jason, Todd. I don't really mean to be impolite, but I'm assuming that it was you that I must thank for getting me out of the ocean? This place feels less like a home and more like a hideaway, Starfire. And unless your decorating style is early shipwreck, I'm going to assume that this place crashed on Earth without anyone even knowing about it. So are you using a cloaking device? What's your power source? Starfire says that it's good to see him getting his strength back, and Jason goes on asking. I I'm talking too much, right? I just, I've never seen an alien before, orange or otherwise. Starfire glares at him, telling him that she's been in solitude for a long time. She's forgotten how obnoxious humans can be. You're right, you're being polite and I'm treating you like my own personal copy of National Geographic. Maybe we should start over. Thank you for saving my life, Princess Cory. Starfire looks at him and points over at a rack, stating that he needs to get dressed. There is some male clothing in there if he'd like. As he looks over, he sees the uniform that she's pointing at and realizes it belongs to Nightwing. He stumbles back, thinking of a time when he held Batman at gunpoint. But before he could shoot, Nightwing was there to stomp him. Jason asks if this is some kind of a joke. Playing a sick game of dress-up isn't going to help you deal with, well, whatever you have going on here in that bright orange head of yours. Starfire asks, what is he talking about? How can clothing do him harm? You are not the man who once wore these, and I am aware that if I needed anything beyond myself to validate my own existence, then I would have already given away my power to be self-defining. It's just that, that human. I have memories of him. Happy ones. We spent day and night together when I arrived on this planet. His name escapes me, but I will remember him if I see him again. But I do not define myself by the men that I have known, only by their clothing, and neither should you. As the night falls, Jason looks through the Tamaranian weaponry, telling himself that Starfire is right. His mind dwells too much on things that have no bearing on him anymore. It's also clear that she loved Nightwing almost as much as, well, Jason hated him. Jason begins to take notes, thinking that this will completely change the war on crime. But with all of this amazing tech, all he can think about is how to use it to hurt people. Has he really fallen that far from Dukra's teachings? A short while later on the beat, Jason finds Starfire and tells her that they need to talk. There's something that she needs to know about him. 
But before Jason could get in another word, she grabs him, kissing him. He pulls back, asking what was that, and she tells him that it is one of the ways that her people assimilate language, knowledge. He said he wanted to talk, so she assumed. Jason points over at a rock, telling her, uh, yeah, how about we just, you know, sit? As they do, Jason tells her everything. He explains that like Nightwing, he too was a ward of Batman, a partner. He was a superhero named Robin. He explains his history, he tells the stories of Red Hood, of his death, and they talk so long that the sun comes up, and at the end of it all, Jason asks if she's mad. She laughs, stating that that would be foolish. On Tamarin, they appreciate the past, they respect it, but they don't live in it. They live here, they live now. Starfire then begins to create dazzling lights with her powers, telling him that some people think that she is a walking nuclear reactor, a danger to herself and others. This heat that roars through her body is supposed to be there. But him, if he keeps all that heat inside, that heart fueled by rage, it will consume him. Starfire hugs Jason, and as she does, Jason takes a moment to think to himself. They don't always get to choose their teachers in life. Sometimes they are crazed vigilantes pretending to love them like a son. Other times they take the form of a space kitty who is smarter than anyone gives her credit for. Reminds him of himself. So the next day, Jason browses the internet and Starfire asks what he is looking at. Jason shows her a news article with the headline, American put to death in Karak. Roy Harper to be executed by interim Karak government and asks, Hey Starfire, are you, uh, you up for a road trip? The following day, the disgraced Roy Harper walks out of his cell with his ball and chain stating, Ha ha! Sunlight! That's not something I see every day. What's the occasion? One of the armed soldiers tells him that if he can believe it, he's got a visitor. He's got five minutes to confess his sins. Roy looks over at the portly priest stating, I would shake your hand, but you know, have I met you? He says that he has passed your beer back of the International Agency of Amnesty, and these conditions are deplorable! Rest assured, I will be filing a complaint with the State Department. As Beerback takes out his Bible, he asks the soldiers if they can give him a moment of privacy. The soldiers scoff as they move away, and Roy tells him that he doesn't want to sound ungrateful, but holy God! Beerback opens up his Bible, and in the cutout pages sits Roy's folded up bow. And Beerback says, Exactly, son. An open mind and an open book will set you free. Roy asks him, You do realize that this is incredibly insane, right? And Beerback yells, Amen! Beerback then pulls on his suspenders, making a clicking sound, and suddenly the suit and the face fly off, and Jason comes out, guns blazing! And Roy quickly snatches up his bow. As the two fight their way out of the compound, Roy asks, What's on the other side? A Batmobile? And Roy points to the rundown, barely functional Jeep, telling him, The Bat Jeep! Hop in! Roy stares for a moment, and Jason asks, Are you speechless? Well, that just made my whole trip worth it, buddy. Once the two jump in, Jason steps on the gas and they get away from the gunfire just around the ridge. They pull up to three tanks, all aimed right at them. Roy says, well, I really hope we've got some good backup for your escape. And Jason tells him, no worry, we'll be fine. A few seconds later, Starfire floats down, destroying the tanks. And Roy simply replies, oh, is she with you? And Jason says, us, yeah. But yeah, she's been with me as well. Starfire then asks if there's anything else that she can do, and Jason asks, well, you know, if you could, you could fly ahead and take out any bad guys or, you know, tanks or anything. Starfire tells him certainly she'll see him soon, and Jason says, can't wait. As Starfire flies ahead, Roy sighs, stating, she didn't even say hi to me, and Jason tells him, she just has a lot in her mind, me. So later back on the Paradise Island, Starfire plays on the beach, and Roy says, I thought people in Gotham hung out in, like, abandoned opera houses. Jason laughs. <laughs> yeah, Gotham sucks. Psychopaths that live there deserve each other, even the bad ones. Roy leans in and whispers, Aren't you worried about what happens when she finds out about you and her ex? Jason asks, What? On account that I tried to kill Nightwing? Unfortunately, it is a non-issue. Turns out that Tamaranians don't see humans as much as sights and smells. They have a terribly short attention span for all things Earth. Seriously. Ask her about the gang she used to hang out with. Doesn't remember them. Roy goes back to looking at Starfire and says, That is interesting. And then a shadowy figure appears asking Jason for a moment of his time. A few moments later, Jason sits at a bar and he says that she is the last person that he ever expected to see again. What's up, Essence? The white-haired woman named Essence tells him that there have been several murders recently where organs have been taken from living bodies. Jason gets up and says, You came to me with this? Really? Don't fall off the broomstick on your way home. And Essence tells him that there's more. The missing organs were removed years before the victim died, but there were no incisions. 
Jason stops looking back, telling her that that could only be, and she responds, the untitled. Yes. So back at the beach, Roy asks Starfire if she's sure that she doesn't remember anyone named Dick. And she tells him no. Roy then asks, what about Garth? Dustin? Vic? And she grabs her towel, telling him no. And he's beginning to bore her. Would he like to have sex? Roy coughs. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> aren't you like Jason's girlfriend? She tells him that she is free to do whatever she wants, when she wants. And if he is not interested, Roy jumps up. No, 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 happy to oblige. Is there anything I need to know before making love to a Tamaranian? Starfire smiles, telling him that all he needs to know is that love has nothing to do with it. Over at the bar, Jason sits back down, stating that if what she is saying is true, it has nothing to do with them. The Untitled is the whole reason why the All Cast was formed all those centuries ago. Essence says that she is sorry to state that the Ancient Order is no longer a consideration. Witness. She spreads little droplets on the counter, and Jason can see the image of a woman dead, and he asks if it is... And she tells him that he knows it is. He quietly yells that it's impossible. The all cast is without any known equal. Nothing short of an alien invasion could do that. But why him? Why doesn't she deal with it herself? She tells him that he knows the answer better than anyone. She was banned from the all cast. Please, Jason. I know you vowed to never return, but please, for me. Jason gets up telling her, fine, I will. But tell me one thing. Why did you? But as he looks back, Essence is gone. A short while later. At the well of the all-cast, Jason kneels down beside Dukra's body, stating that he's so sorry that he wasn't there for her. He's sorry that she sent him away. He is sorry that he let her. It's at that moment that the blue light swirls around and the ghostly image of Dukra appears, telling Jason that there is no time for tears, man-child, nor regrets. An untitled was here, more powerful than ever, and it broke into the chamber of all. Jason says that he will find it. He will find it, and he will avenge them. Dukra reaches out, holding Jason's head, stating, that he is always going on about avenging people. It's as if he learned nothing. Keep your heart free of vengeance, man-child, and I will see you in a better place. As her spirit fades, Jason can hear footsteps getting closer, and he turns back, pointing both guns. Finally, someone to shoot. As he gets ready to pull the trigger, though, he stops himself, stating that he can't shoot them. Even if they are animated corpses, they don't deserve to re-die at his hands. But at that moment, an arrow sticks in the back of one of the animated corpses and explodes. Starfire flies down, asking if it was really necessary, and Roy pulls back at his bow, telling her, The guy was dead! He totally didn't feel a thing. As the last of the zombies fall, Roy laughs, stating that it's like taking out the trash. And Jason tells him, No, they weren't trash. These people were warriors. They were teachers. They may have been the greatest people that I've ever known. And after bowing and taking a moment to pray for the dead, Jason tells the others that it's time to go kick ass as a team. And that brings us to the conclusion of the first three issues of the original Red Hood and the Outlaws. Now, I want to spend a few moments at the end of this video here to explain what we're doing. If you notice, this came out on Sunday. Since we did Superman, then we did Batman, guess what our new weekly video is going to be on Sundays? The original Red Hood and the Outlaws. This takes place at the New 52. It launched in 2011, pretty much right after uh, Jason was starting to make amends. He was going around in a Batman-style costume right before the New 52 happened. The New 52 put him back in the Red Hood outfit that we all know and love. So this is going to take place before Bizarro, before Artemis, before the Evil Teen Titans, before he went back to Gotham, all of that stuff. This is just a 50-issue run of Jason Starfire and Roy Harper, or about 50 issues. Maybe it made it like 30. There was a lot of weird things that happened during this period, but there's going to be a lot of crazy adventures Adventures. There's like a total of six to seven volumes. We're going to cover it here every Sunday. If this is what you guys want, if you don't want this, and this is, the, I have an actual alternative. This isn't me asking for you to give a like, though, give this video a like if you want the Red Hood video. The alternative Sunday video that we are considering is doing the entire original Wolverine Weapon X run. And next week, we're probably going to bring you the first part of that. We might rotate these back and forth. Red Hood, Wolverine. Red Hood, Wolverine. But if we get overwhelming support for one of these, we're just going to do it the whole way through. It's exactly what we did with the original Avengers and Justice League coverage here on the channel, where we did both of them, and you guys just wanted nothing but Justice League, so we just did Justice League. So we're going to do Wolverine, Red Hood, see what you guys think. Give this video a bunch of likes. Let me know in the comments down below. I don't care about Wolverine Weapon X. Just do this one. And you'll get the original story of the Red Hood and the Outlaws. Thank you guys for your support. I'll see you next week right here with the next Sunday chapter.